Welcome to episode 52 of Lily Sizzling. Coming up next. Welcome to another episode of Lily Sizzling. And today on Lily Sizzling, we're going to be making some steaks rubbed in some uh, different seasonings. We're going to take these steaks, marinate them. We're going to get some wine sauce over them. This wine sauce is going to have cranberries in it and everything else. We're going to be making some sweet potatoes, some candy sweet yams or potatoes, or whatever we want to call them. And then on the side of that, we're going to have some garlic butter uh, Brussels sprouts. And for our drink, because it's we're getting festive into the holiday season, I'm going to teach you how to make an easy, quick, spiced rum eggnog. So that's what we're going to be making for our drink. It's more of an adult type beverage, so don't give it to the kids. If you give it to the kids, omit the rum and but <laughs> or your rocks too, your your cameraman. So we're gonna start with the steak rub marinade here. Hey, we have about like it's unprofessional to include me in the videos. No, it's not. I decide what's professional around here and I'm gonna include you. You shouldn't uh, talk to the camera guy. Then I'll be talking to myself and I'll That's like against alone. the rules of um, filming. No, it's not stuff. against my rules of filming. Alright. Whose show is this? Mine. Lily Sizzling? Yes. Okay, so we're going to start with our steak rub here, and I want you to get some little bit of onion flakes, some garlic, some seasoned salt. A little pinch of seasoned salt here. Some the audience pepper. doesn't want to listen to me. Well, I want to listen. Oops. Yeah, I'm listening to you already bumbling around over there on my wind chime. Some pepper. I'm not really here. A little bit of rosemary. Robots do the camera work. Yeah. Rosemary. And just a pinch. A pinch of cinnamon. And this is going to be our steak rub. So, did you get that, folks? We have it's cinnamon, garlic powder, onions, pepper, rosemary, seasoned salt into this little dish here. And this is going to kind of be yeah. like our steak rub. That actually smells pretty good. It does. It smells it's terrific. Some peppery and spicy. Okay. So we're going to take these steaks here, and as you can see, I've got them all ready to go. Take a little bit of olive oil and put it over these steaks so we can rub them nice and good with this olive oil. Oh, we're yeah. going to kind of give them a little massage. Yeah, that's right. Rub them down. So we're going to kind of sprinkle it around and massage it in and just make sure that all your steaks get a nice good coating of this stuff. And it shouldn't, shouldn't be too much of it. See, just like how I'm doing here. Just be liberal, be oh, nice. Don't be stingy. Oh, I won't be. Okay, you're going to take and rub this into your steaks. So with your oh. olive oil, you're going to give them a, like a really nice massage here. And you're going to see how it's going to coat right into the steak. And There we go. Uh -huh. So we're going to start getting these guys ready to go here. I got a little second dish here. And look at that rub. Rub it into your steak. Massage it in, guys. You massage your meat like you mean it. Massage it with all your might. That's right. Massage your steak, massage your meat. There you go. Get it Don't all be in there. No, don't be afraid to massage your meat. Your hands get all goopy and icky, but hey, this is part of the process here. Let's get some more off this guy there. Ah. Oh. That's right. Massage it. Yes, I will. Spread the love some off this side here. This guy's oh look at that nice seasoning on this guy. Okay, so we have a nice marinade here going with the, these steaks. They're all nicely seasoned and massaged in with this olive oil and all these seasonings, the cinnamon, the pepper, the garlic, the onions, the seasoned salt, the rosemary. So we're going to take and we're going to cover these guys up with a little bit of cellophane or foil or whatever you want to cover them with here. A lid even if you have a lid for your Tupperware. So we're going to cover these guys up and we're going to put them into the refrigerator for a total of about maybe an hour or so. We're going to get these sweet potatoes up. We're going to start working on our sweet potatoes. We're going to get them uh, nice and softened so we can peel their skin off. And then we're going to start working on to our, onto our other things. Okay y'all, this is like a yam or sweet potato here. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to take the yam and sweet potatoes, whatever you want to call them, and we're going to put them into a pot of water here. And we're basically have this pot of water come up to a boil. So 
if you can see how I'm doing this. And we're just going to cover this up in a few minutes here and let this come to a boil. These guys need to get steamed and softened up before we can make the candied sweet potatoes out of them. So that's basically what we're going to be doing is just sitting lid on them and forgetting them. So we're going to take a bunch of these candied yams here and we're going to mush them together into a bowl. And we're first right now is what we're doing is we're taking the skin off of them. And so the skin just, once you do it right and they're nice and boiled, the skin just peels off. You have to let them cool for about 15, 20 minutes. They are hot still. This is just after 15 minutes of cooling. So you just kind of peel the jacket right off the potato. So my mom calls it the jacket, so whatever. To that, she calls it your name. You get the tips off of them here. And you just get them all ready to go into a little bowl. Yep, skin and all. All the skin just comes right off. It becomes kind of a messy endeavor. And then we're going to take here and we're going to smush them down in a few minutes and get them all ready to go. So, we're going to continue just peeling the skins off of these things. <laughs> it's not really rocket science or nothing. It's quite self-explanatory. Just peel the skin. Kind of mold them off with your hands as best as you can. It's nice and cold in here so the steam's just showing up real good. <laughs> yeah, they're still kind of warm. Yep, just get the skins right off of them. This is another thing that you can puree and mash up and create into baby food. So babies love this stuff again. So Is that true, Layla? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take the fork and the skin's just really easy to come right off. I just toss in my sink and we'll get rid of it later. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> They're still warm, honey. I'll give you some in a few minutes here. So, skin off and you just put it into another bowl and get it ready here to transfer and mash up. So, that's what we're going to be doing. Look at that. We're going to get all these guys mashed up into into our bowls here that we're going to bake them with. We're going to put sugar and cinnamon and butter with them and everything. Oh, it's going to be scrumptious. All right, so just pe keep peeling your skins off. Ew, potato skin. And we're going to get these guys ready to go. Lila loves these. These are really good. Babies love sweet potatoes. Mm. Yeah, that's good, huh? Yeah. So see, you can take the sweet potatoes and if you just kind of mash up a little bit, puree it, get a little baby spoon. Oh, they love them. Ooh, is that good? See folks what you can do? You can get some of these little tiny containers, like any like little Tupperware type store that sells like Tupperware or whatever. You just get some of all these containers. You can make up different things. Like you've seen me do the pumpkin now, now you're seeing me do sweet potatoes. <laughs> Both of these are really good first foods for your baby. And of course your baby's gonna love them if you wanna try to get like a shot of Lila. Oh! It's really good stuff. Make sure it's not, not too hot. A little bit of a little bit of cinnamon on there with the sweet potatoes just Going to make a little nice, uh, nice second stage food here that we're making tonight. So once again, throw in a bonus recipe of making homemade baby food, sweet potatoes. <laughs> Babies love them. And you can take these little food containers here and you can store and put them in your refrigerator for about 24 hours after you feed your baby with them. Uh, and they'll, they'll last good. So just take some of your table food and make some sweet potatoes with it and feed your babies. All right, so let's get back to the recipe here for our candy sweet potatoes for the big kids. All righty, so into our bowl here, we're going to put some butter and we're going to get some cinnamon up in here. A little bit of cinnamon. All right, folks, so we have a good half cup of sugar or so. Maybe about three fourths cup of black potatoes. Okay, so we're going to blend this on in here and mush them on up. I use a blender because I don't have a whisk and, well, whatever, it just works quicker. So I blend the sweet potatoes. I have some butter in here, some cinnamon, and now some brown sugar, about three-fourths of the cup's worth. Oh, yeah. Oh, delicious smelling. There we go. 
Lila is fully reaping the benefits of having a mommy who likes to cook. Oh, that, that will be good to just eat right off of there. Uh, I love sweet potatoes. One of my favorite things is like the candy yam, sweet potato stuff. I like it without the sugar, with the sugar. Heck, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to sprinkle a little bit more cinnamon into Open here. Standy. Oh, I'm not going to be. And we're going to swirl this around. We're going to bake it into a bowl here and start up on our steaks after we get done with this. So let's get this right here. And let's put this all into this bowl. If you can get some stoneware bowls and bowls that bake into the oven, some old dishes here. And you just heat them right on up. We're going to heat this at about 375. Let it bake for about 20 minutes or so while we, maybe 20 to 30 minutes almost, while we work here on our steak. Our steaks have been marinating now for about a good two hours. We've let this marinate on the steak. Those steaks are going to be delicious with our wine sauce. We're going to make our wine sauce and fry these steaks on up and get those Brussels sprouts rolling. Oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. Look at that. Okay, smooth it down on out here a little bit and let's get some uh, let's get some marshmallows here. Top them up on these guys. Just get some little mini marshmallows. Get them at the supermarket in little bags. Yeah, they work good. I don't need to do the big ones because they don't spread and distribute as good as you might want to think. So the mini marshmallows work the best for them. They're just there's no right or wrong measurement. I just take some handfuls here and I just top them right on top. One year I made too many marshmallows, so I'll try not to do that. I, I'll try not to be stingy, but I'll try not to overdo it as well. <laughs> so I, I will just, I'll seriously, I'll, I'll, I'll mellow the oven up with, with marshmallows. So this is my favorite part of doing this, is just getting this marshmallow bake all over the top of this. Oh, there we have it. That's a good marshmallow bake right there. You know what I do, folks, here is with the, these marshmallows is I give them a good extra whirl of cinnamon right over the top of them. So that cinnamon just bakes right in with that sugar, that marshmallow, and creates a just more scrumptious. This brings out the flavor and stuff of fall. So this is a beautiful dish. Once again, this can be done on Thanksgiving, it can be done on Christmas, it can be done on Halloween, whatever time in the fall period, September through like January, or heck, anytime you want to, and you find these guys in season, they're pretty, pretty easy to find. So let's get these guys here up, on up into the oven here, 375, and let's start working on our steak sauce, our steak, and our Brussels sprouts, and get this episode plated on up so Lila can eat the rest of these sweet potatoes. All right, folks, our steaks are done here, and we got a nice steak rub going on these guys. So we've got some a little bit more olive oil in here. Yep. She's why more sweet potatoes. <laughs> oh my goodness. So look at these steaks and they're all wrapped up. And we're getting these steaks ready to fry up here. We're gonna sizzle these steaks here. We got our Brussels sprouts and our Brussels sprouts are all getting ready to cook. So we have everything underway for sizzle, sizzle, sizzle time. Yes, we do, Lila. Sizzle time. And look at those Brussels sprouts. Oh, they're so pretty and green. Yes, yeah, they are. Brussels sprouts. Oh, yes, that's why she's crying. Mm -hmm. No, don't feed me Brussels sprouts, Mommy. Okay, so next up is our sauce, and we're going to start working on our sauce here in a second and get these guys on up, and we're going to sizzle it away, and look at our look at our candy sweet potatoes. They're starting to get done in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the marshmallows. We're getting marshmallow gooey goodness on those. We got our Brussels sprouts up. We got our steaks now sizzling up. We're going to make our sauce. We're going to get our sauce ready to go and our garlic butter and start finishing up this episode. All right, folks, we're gonna make our sauce here. We got one and a half cups of beef broth, and we're gonna mix this with some wine. We're gonna get about a good cup of wine. So we have one cup of beef broth, and we're gonna add in a cup of wine here. And this is gonna be the basis for our sauce here. We're making a cranberry sauce. We're gonna add in a little bit of this garlic. We're gonna add in just a little bit of pepper, and you can use garlic cloves if you want to. So I get a good sizzle up on everything in here. It's going to be great. And this, folks, uh, what we're going to add in next, uh, we're going to add in a, something called a little shallot. And our little shallot here, we're going to turn this on the low, is like a little mini onion. And what he's going to do is, is uh, shallots are really good for soups and sauces uh, just because of their consistency that you use. I mean, you're not, uh, it's basically an onion, but the, but it'll be a noticeable difference 
between an onion and a shallot, as silly as that seems. So you really need the shallot. I mean, if all else fails, some onion flakes or an onion. But try to get the shallot if you can. And get a good, good sized shallot here and let's skin him off and get him cut up and ready to go in here. Oh, he smells really good. He kind of smells like a yellow onion, like a good sweet onion. So I don't know if anyone's ever worked with those yet. We've got those steaks sizzling over there. Sizzle, sizzle on our steaks. And those Brussels sprouts now, folks, have came up to a really nice boil. So our shallot, and we're going to uh, chop him up into little fine pieces here. And work on him and get him stuck into the sauce. So let's cut him on up. This is the first time uh, in sizzle history that we are working with a shallot, so this is kind of a new ingredient that we've incorporated for tonight. You guys have not seen any shallots in the past. Okay, so good for good for soups like split pea soup sauces. Uh, That's kind of has a different smell than it is. Slightly different. It's more uh, maybe a little bit more sweet. Yeah. This is potent though. Get get your eyeballs going just the same as any dangle one. I swear I gotta wear goggles or something. Oh yeah. Oh, we're sizzling hard now. We're gonna start checking on these steaks here. We're gonna get our garlic butter ready. And I'm gonna start getting that drink all ready for y'all. That spice rum eggnog. Woo! My eyeballs. Here's one spicy little shallot. You get the idea. Shallot in. Woo, get him out of here. That are my eyes, I swear. Why? And get some cranberries in here. All right, so we're going to have this on to about a medium here. We're going to bring it up to a boil. The thing is, is that it's going to be kind of like a reduction. With the, the sauce is going to reduce in size here once once we start doing this. So we have like two cups of sauce now. It's going to yield maybe a good cup or so when we get done because it's going to boil out a little bit once it's cooking. We're going to get this stuff right over the tops of our steaks and drizzle it on there. So we've got our steaks sizzling. We've got our shallots and our, and our sauce going. We've got Brussels sprouts. We're going to start flipping our steaks and get ready to make these drinks coming up next. I know I'm still crying. He's laughing at me over there. So I'm like, ah, oh, still teary eyed from that dang shallot. That thing was hot, hot. Okay. Hey, watch your mouth. So, yeah, I swear that would teach you from swearing. Okay, so we have some butter in here, and we're going to basically make some garlic butter. So, sprinkle a little bit of garlic over the butter, and a little bit of pepper, and we're going to melt this in the microwave for about a minute or so. Uh, right at the end here when we get done with our Brussels sprouts. So as you can see, our steaks here are sizzling on up. We got shallots, we got everything going here, and now we're going to start working on our drinks. Garlic butter's in here about a good minute or two. Uh, we would have the garlic uh, butter ready to go over these guys once we get ready to plate this on up, which we're getting really close here. These steaks are about done. Maybe about eight, ten minutes aside, uh, depending on how you want to go here. Uh, as you can see, I've already flipped them once. Uh, we're almost doing this in real time here. I was making the sauce, so... They're not, they've not been on for very long, but they do cook kind of swiftly. So when you don't want to overcook your steaks, you want them a good, uh, I'd say a good medium, medium rare here. Uh, is how I like my steak, a little bit bloody still in the middle. So steaks are getting close here to being done. And we're going to uh, start working here on our drink next, which we're going to be using a new ingredient again tonight. We're going to be using the uh, cinnamon stick. So we've got little cinnamon sticks here ready to go. I'm going to pop the seal. And uh, this is going to be a really neat ingredient to put inside of our drink here. We're going to drizzle some nutmeg and some cinnamon right over the tops of our rum spiked uh, little eggnogs. Yar. Yeah, oh, yar. Oh. Lily took all the rum. It's all on Sizzle Tastic. That's where it went. <laughs> all right. 
All right, folks. So we are making rum spice eggnog. So get out your holiday eggnog, and you can make the you can make your eggnog at home. But if you want to do a quicker uh, episode or quick uh, quicker episode, shoot, <laughs> quicker recipe at home, uh, one of the easiest ways is just take some eggnog and put it in here. And we're gonna go about a good cup or so of eggnog here. We're gonna do two cups of eggnog. Two cups of eggnog, some ice cubes, wink, and maybe just a couple more ice cubes in there. We're gonna kind of make this an iced drink. And we're gonna get out the rum, of course, here, and we're gonna measure about a good, maybe fourth of a cup of rum to go into this eggnog. So there we go. That'll do it. Don't be stingy. <laughs> if I was stingy, you, if, if I don't be stingy, you're gonna end up drunk and plastered. Here, we'll add just a little bit more for rocks. We'll go <laughs> half a cup to two, that's a lot of rum, rocks, there. You're going to die. I'm going to be taking you to a hospital for alcohol. So no, I'm like, Do I have okay, to work so we're tomorrow? In, yeah, exactly. You do. So we're going to blend this guy on up here, and we're going to make a nice iced eggnog uh, rum drink here. And we're going to season them on up with a uh, nutmeg and with cinnamon sticks. Alrighty, folks. Here you have it. You have frothy rum eggnog. Yeah. No, we're going to have different eggnog, honey. You don't want this one. So for this eggnog here, we're going to serve up here with a little bit of nutmeg right on top. Can I help you with those? Yep, here. Look. You can have your own eggnog. Take that one. And we're going to take some cinnamon sticks here, and we're going to place a cinnamon stick right in with it. Oh, yeah. When you get, drink that down, you're going to get the cinnamon flavor in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and cup this to your rocks, and this is all yours to drink. Look at that bad boy. Meanwhile, our steaks are almost done. Yep, I'm gonna have to show them, show them <laughs> drinking that. Not thing. my fake effect. Yeah, you know your fake special effect. special effects. I mean, yeah. Is it good? You weren't stingy. No, I was not stingy on the one. Is it strong? Is it good? Have some. Miss Sizzling. No, thank you. You're still dressed up like Envy Gerald. <laughs> Our producer. That's his gimmick. He, uh... Cut. Okay, cut. I will. <laughs> Enjoy your rum. Alright, so steaks are done, folks. Come here and take a look. They're getting all grilled up here. These are just about done. Oh yeah, grilled, seared, marinated steaks. We have our sauce over here. Our sauce is just about ready to get done here. We're just waiting for it to come up to a boil, to boil it up here a little bit more. It's a really nice uh, little cranberry sauce here with the shallots and stuff that's gonna go right over the top of these steaks. And our Brussels sprouts here are done, so I've turned these food outs on and off basically here. And uh, let's, Go ahead and start working on our garlic butter, which our garlic butter is just easy. Just uh, this microwave loves me. We we fight it all the time. It does that. Okay, two minutes. Start on the microwave, and we have our sizzle testing. Look at our potatoes in there. Our candy yams. These suckers are done. I've turned them off. The oven is they're they're just waiting to be taken out of heat. So we have everything getting ready here. We just made our sizzle toastic little drink here. We made the spice from drink with the eggnog, with the ice, with the with the uh, cinnamon sticks, with the nutmeg over it. I mean, we're talking like this is like a really good fancy meal here that you can make for holidays. If you're sick of turkey, if you're sick of ham and you want something new, do this. Do steaks, cranberry sauce, the candy DMs. The, the Brussels sprouts with the garlic butter, the, the spice drum drinks. This is a beautiful holiday meal that you can serve to your family. We're going to get a plate up for you next. All right, folks, so everything here is done, and we're getting everything ready to go here. Our sauce here, look at how big these cranberries get. Remember how little they were? They kind of just juice up and, and plump up in size when you cook them. So they get nice and nice and good in there. And so we have this cranberry wine sauce that's going to come over here and go over our steaks. We are going to turn this off. Okay, folks, so we have our steak here. And we're going to basically take some of this sauce and we're just going to drizzle sauce all over the tops of it. 
And we have our little uh, little drink over here that we need too. So we got this sauce all over the tops of the steak. And we're going to take these uh, candied yams here. We're going to get a nice big serving here of candied <laughs> yams. Oh, yeah, okay. sure. I'll take that. <laughs> here, I'll get you some of these marshmallows in one second. Oh, look at those roasted marshmallows right over the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that's delicious. I won't be stingy oh, for yeah. you. You know what? It's coming. All right. So let's take some of this butter here and let's put garlic butter all over the tops here. Awesome. Uh, our Brussels sprouts. So there you have it folks. This is one sizzle-tastic meal. We have our drinks here folks. We have everything ready to go. Here. This is a be beautiful display of food. This would be a very beautiful holiday meal. So here we have it. We have made the candied yams. We did the, the yams here is what we boiled them into the oven. Uh, uh, I mean on the stove. We got their skins off. And then we uh, basically put the about half to three-fourths a cup of brown sugar, a spritz of cinnamon, and then uh, we bake these guys in the oven. We coat them with this beautiful marshmallow top and sprinkled cinnamon over the tops of those marshmallows. We did the steaks here, and what we did was we, uh, we marinated our steaks in a rub. With, we used the cinnamon in a rub, and we used the, uh, some pepper and some garlic and all those good things, the so rosemary all in a rub here with the olive oil. And so uh, we then we did the sauce over the tops of these steaks, and we used uh, the red wine. We used the the beef broth. We used the the uh, cranberries. I mean, there are just so many ingredients in this: the shallot, onions, and then we did our uh, basically our little uh, Brussels sprout guys over here from the big Brussels sprouts uh, stock, and we put the garlic butter over the tops, and then we made our spiced eggnog rum drink which I used two cups of eggnog about half a cup of rum a cinnamon stick and some nutmeg and cinnamon over the tops of it with some ice cubes I blended the sky on up and I topped it off here and made them look really pretty so I hope you enjoy the holiday seasons this would be an excellent uh, alternative to Thanksgiving coming up in a couple weeks if you don't want to do the turkey and you want to do a more romantic steak dinner this would be it. So I hope you have a very good holiday season here and uh, drink responsibly with your eggnog spiced rum. So uh, watch us on sizzletastic.com, youtube.com backslash Lily Sizzling, youtube.com backslash The Rock's Heart, and yes, Facebook. You can come like us on our Facebook. And uh, I hope you have a very, very good sizzletastic meal. So, bon appetit.